everybody. Welcome to another episode of Get Ready. And uh, this is a great delight for me to, uh, to introduce this person to you. I, she was one of my very first clients when I first started out doing EFT. And then within a year or two, she was one of the founding EFT masters. And I'm not going to say that it was my tapping sessions that created that, but um, I'm open to the possibility that it contributed. So let me tell you about my dear friend, Jackie Crooks. Jackie is one of the pioneers in energy psychology. She is an international speaker and trainer, an EFT founding master, and is one of the authors of EFT and Beyond and Tapping into Ancestral Healing. Her background in NLP and hypnosis helped her create her unique way of working with EFT, which allows deep level changes quickly and easily without trauma. Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Crooks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that intro, Brad. I'm quite sure you did contribute to it. <laughs> I'd like to think so. I, you know, I like to think that any any good thing that happens for one of my clients after our sessions, you know, that I've played at least some small part. <laughs> so you have this new book out mm -hmm. and it's already out. It's already gone on the bestseller list. That's awesome. Tell us about it and why you wrote it. I wrote it because people kept asking me to share how I worked with clients because I probably worked with clients in a slightly different way. And I got nagged into it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I specialize in working with ancestral healing because in working with clients, it always seemed to me that it didn't matter how far back in this life I went, there was always more stuff that needed clearing. And once I started working on ancestral stuff, clearing the family patterns that came down through the family line, old strategies that people had passed on, um, cleared traumas around where their family came from, because depending on where your family comes from will depend on the strategies that they've been running. So Jewish people will have different strategies to somebody from Afro-Caribbean, to somebody from the UK, to somebody from Eastern Europe. You know, everybody has different strategies because of what was going on in that area at that time. Right. And, and it's all about survival. Things were created to help people survive. And it's passed on with the best of intentions, often not verbally, just by the viewpoint that somebody has that a child will watch and try and copy. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that we're carrying isn't ours. And if you're trying to clear things for yourself, when you're not carrying somebody else's, clearing your own stuff's a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought of the term um, survival of the scaredest. You know, one of the reasons that we have so much fear is because the people who are a little more careful are the ones who live to pass on their genes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that absolutely. That makes so much sense, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, so... So it felt like I wanted to get that stuff out there. So, so people who are therapists can use the concepts and they can use my languaging or they can put their own stuff in or it'll mesh with whatever they do. But also, so people could use it as a guide to go through clearing what's not theirs, clearing what is theirs, then working out what they want and where they want to be and what's in the way. So it's like the aim is to take people on a journey. Um, Clearing, clearing, clearing as they go. Yes. ABC, always be clearing. <laughs> and, and I can say, having read it, that it's a great book and you were kind enough to uh, ask me to write the foreword to it. So. I'm so grateful that you did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's it really is this this thing of recognizing that so much of what holds us back from being happier, from being healthier, from being more successful is stuff that predates our birth date. Yeah. Because you know, it's been proved that trauma is passed down through genes, because that's part of the survival strategies. So the beliefs and things that were created around traumas will also get passed down. So, you know, we can be carrying a whole 
bag of rocks that we don't know anything about. Yeah. yeah. And so I always say to clients, if if you're not achieving what you want to achieve, if you're not going where you want to go, things aren't working as you want them to be, it's just because there's something in the way. Yeah. So don't beat yourself up, just clear what's in the way. <laughs> Yeah, I always say the extent to which we're not experiencing what we want is the extent to which we're resisting it. And we tend to resist it because of fear. You know, and it may be someone else's fear. It may be our great, 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 great grandmother's fear. <laughs> exactly. You know, if you think 600 years ago, how different life was, you know, anything that's that sort of era, how is that going to fit into 2022? You know, one, one of the metaphors I use is, you know, would, would you wear your four-year-old self's coat? No, you wouldn't fit into it. It's not fit for purpose. It wouldn't keep you warm or dry. So why would you think a four-year-old's belief system would fit you any better? <laughs> right. All right. Or the you know, belief system of an ancestor from the, the fourth century. <laughs> <laughs> And it's about just remembering that it's all about survival and it's it's outdated computer programming. You know, when you can give the subconscious the updated information, then it makes different choices. It's always making the best choice it can with the information it has. So update it and it'll do a much better job for you. Yeah, I always say we've, we're always doing the best we can. If we could look at every unfortunate choice we've made, well, any choice we've made, but the ones that we beat ourselves up for, if we opened our brain and looked at the neural pathways leading up to that, it's like, oh, I totally see why I did that. Yeah. Now, what can I change so that I have the opportunity to make a different choice? Yeah. And I think what people don't recognize is that when they hit something that has a similarity to a trauma or a traumatic feeling that they had earlier, when they're triggered back to that, they only have the resources available that they had then. Right. So when you say, next time he does that or says that, I'm going to, and then they do that, and you do what you always do, which is, woo, 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 and then you beat yourself up afterwards, it's just because you didn't have the resources at the time you were triggered back to. So, you know, the more you can clear early traumas, the more resources you have available to yourself. Excellent. And so how much of it is, you know, there's two ways of looking at it, that some of it is, is carried in the DNA that's passed down. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also just in terms of behavior. Yeah. So how uh, my great grandmother dealt with some situation and then my grandmother learning from that had certain behavior traits which she then passed on to my mother and, so, and passed on to me. So how much of it is passed on beliefs and behaviors and how much of it is stored trauma in the, in the DNA? The simple answer is I don't know, but I do believe it comes from both, from both angles. Yeah. yeah. And I always put past life in there as well. Because I think, you know, if you've got unhealed business from past life, that the traumas from that and it's it's often not the trauma that is the problem it's the beliefs that get created because of the trauma right it's not what happens it's our it's what we think our, about what happens because what's what's traumatic for one person is just another day at the office yeah. for another person or or interesting or uh, or entertainment yeah you know certain movies horror movies some people, it's it's traumatic to watch certain scenes, and for another person, it's like, oh, that's what I do for fun. Like, yeah. Okay. See <laughs> that one myself. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it is. You're right. Judge. So, I mean, ultimately, it's all energy, and it's the energy that's in our body right now, and that's why we can heal it now. Because whether it happened, you know, when we were four or when our grandmother was four, or when it was a previous incarnation of ourselves in 4 BC, <laughs> it's whatever energy we have right now 
so we don't have to go back in time and say and make sure that didn't happen no it's clearing it here now it's, it's about letting parts know that uh, it's one of the phrases that i that i've borrowed from tapas and tat is it happened it's over and i survived because for many parts of you that is completely new information so, you know, once you can give that sort of updated information, parts go, okay, you mean I don't have to do that anymore? <laughs> hmm, let me think about this. <laughs> <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> and, you know, the neural pathways, when we're constantly triggered into something, there will be neural pathways that get stronger and stronger and stronger that support our response to something. So if every time somebody gives you that look that you're, father or your mother gave you you know you then start seeing it in your teachers you start seeing it in your boss you start seeing it in your boyfriend and each time you do that neural pathway that triggers that response gets stronger so you don't have to do anything about it it happens or you're there it's like being on a motorway yeah um you know it's good to clear that and as you start to clear the traumas and the belief system then the brain patterns will will change too yeah, yeah. You know, tap directly onto that. And I think the other thing to remember is that your mother was in the womb of her mother when the eggs that became part of you were formed. So whatever was going on in your grandmother's life you know, was, was determining what was switched on for your mother yeah. it determines what goes on for you. So even just on that physical level, you know, you're talking about two generations further back. Yeah, so, that's always a bizarre concept. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, you're talking wars, you're talking famines, you're talking Great Depression. Um, so even just on that very simple bit, you can see how it goes further back. Yeah, yeah, because part of us was energetically was, and physically was there. Yeah. And, and doing the work is not denying that it happened. It's not denying that those people went through that and it's not dismissing their experience. It's acknowledging right. their experience, acknowledging what went on and then allowing that to release on behalf of everybody. And I do think when you do the healing, it ripples back through the family line and down through the family line. So it's almost, it's never too late to do the healing. Yeah. You know, focus on you, but it will affect all those who came before you and it will affect anybody that comes after you. And, you know, I do think many of us on, on the planet at this time came to break the family patterns because they're just keeping the old stuff going. Yeah. Yeah. When, when to tap is like when to plant a tree. The best time is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard the the story of the uh, the ham cutting off the end of the ham. This uh, oh yes, I have. Yes. Yeah, where the where this woman always cuts off the end of the ham before she bakes the ham, and her husband says, "Why do you cut off the end of the ham?" And she said, "Well, uh, because my mom always did." She calls over her mom, "Mom, why did you always cut off the end of the ham?" She goes, well, "Because." My mom always did. She called the grandmother. Why'd you cut off the end of the hand? Well, because we only had a small oven. It wouldn't fit otherwise. <laughs> and it's that kind of thing as we, we continue these things on without knowing the reason. Yeah. And so knowing the, so the, that fear that we hold on to, knowing the reason, okay, well, that person had a reason for fear because they were actually facing that traumatic event at that moment. For me to continue holding on to that fear in this moment no longer serves a purpose. And I think sometimes just letting clients understand that makes huge shifts, whether you're tapping or whether you're not, because they've never seen anything as anything except that's just how it is. Exactly. Yeah. We get very stuck into the, well, and it's that whole thing of human beings craving homeostasis. It's like, you know, that's just the way it is. And I want it to be just the way it is because I can't handle anything different. Yeah. And so even if it's crap, 
it's my crap. It's my family's crap. We've been dealing with it for centuries. And, you know, why on earth would I change to something new? Oh, sure. There'd be more happiness, more health, more money, whatever. But, you know, but, but give up all this. <laughs> it's so comfortably uncomfortable, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And we have this thing of heirlooms, you know, it's been, this trauma has been in my family for years. <laughs> These excuses have been in my family for years. <laughs> and actually, I, you know, I did some work on one of the videos with um, somebody with a Jewish background. And, and what came up was that, you know, her family had been through so much trauma in the Holocaust. She couldn't allow herself to be happy because the small child inside her thought that was being disloyal to those who went through yes. that. Yeah. Um, you know, so reframing that they went through it in the hopes that nobody else would have to. And suddenly, oh, but it, it took a lot of tapping to shift that. That was a really deeply ingrained one. And I suspect it had been deeply ingrained in her mother, whose mother had had a really difficult time. Yeah, absolutely. It, it goes along with the idea of honor your mother and your father. Yes. And that means holding on to their trauma. It means holding on to their misunderstandings as beliefs and uh, you know whatever they think is right or wrong to honor my mother and my father i have to believe that no matter mm -hmm. what it how it messes up my life <laughs> if, if if they are bad at math and say that three plus three equals 16 you know i can show up and get an f on my math test but say to the teacher i'm honoring my mother and my father I, you know that yeah. that's more important than uh, than getting a good grade in math <laughs> or survive you know thriving in life yeah and it's like like somehow i can somehow my suffering benefits them somehow my suffering honors them as opposed to you no know, i want to make the world a better place and the suffering can limit me in terms of that and so the best way for me to honor the people from the past is to make sure that never happens again yeah. By creating a more peaceful world. <laughs> yeah. You just reminded me when you were talking about you know, honoring your fa father, etc. You know, my dad always said that he couldn't sing. So I said I couldn't sing. And it went back to my grandfather, who when he was singing at primary school, which is you know, seven or eight, mm -hmm. the teacher said, Hawksley, you can fill the ink wells. <laughs> So he decided he couldn't sing. So my dad decided he couldn't sing. So I decided I couldn't sing. And yeah, I can't because I don't let myself. <laughs> but, but you know, I, you'd much rather fill the inkwells <laughs> because that my family can do. It's the family motto. We fill the inkwells. <laughs> tap, 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 tap. tap. <laughs> And, you know, and thinking about my dad, who I was very close to, you know, as a small child, every statement he made, I took as a rule. And I made it into a rule for myself. Yeah. You know, when you're very small, you're trying to make sense of a crazy world. So any rule you can make makes it feel less crazy, even though the rule itself is probably crazy. Yeah. But at least it's got something around it, something concrete that you can actually focus on. Right. Otherwise, it's just flying around and you've no idea what's going on or how it's going to happen. And so many of those beliefs were ones that your dad picked up as a small child. Yeah. That he picked up from his parents who picked it up as a small child. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're, it's not our four-year-old's jacket that we're wearing. It's our great, 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 great grandparents' four-year-old's. Four <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Not only is it too small, it's really outdated. <laughs> Pretty threadbare. <laughs> There's too thin to put even patches on it anymore. <laughs> and we're still crying. <laughs> I'm going to make it work. So before we, uh, before I turned on the uh, recorder, you, you uh, graciously offered that you might do some tapping with us. I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have you love to and do so. <laughs> and I, I, just, I thought we could just do a really simple one that's just 
updating the conversation for the subconscious. So if I'm working on ancestral stuff with clients, then I'll go to quite a, a deep level, but this will be just putting a bit of new information in there so that they can start considering different possibilities. Is that okay? That would be lovely. So and mostly I just tap on the karate point, but we'll see if I go somewhere else. <laughs> So even though I, I meant to put that when when you give me the video for the the holiday peace video, <laughs> I was like, oh, she's tapping the karate chop below the screen. I should put something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just forget because I just saw they sit yeah. on my stomach, you know. <laughs> so even though, even though I'm carrying a lot of stuff that's not mine, I'm carrying a lot of stuff that's not mine. And there are parts of me that don't know what's mine. And there are parts of me that don't know what's mine. And what belong to somebody else. And what belong to somebody else. And I've been carrying it all dutifully. And I've been carrying it all dutifully. Right up until now. Right up until now. And I love and accept all those parts of me. And I love and accept all those parts of me. They've done a great job. That have done a great job. And that job is now complete. And that job is now complete. And they can do what comes naturally. And they can do what comes naturally. And go off and play. And go off and play. <laughs> they can have an ice cream too if they want. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? They can have an ice cream too if they want. <laughs> they can have an ice cream too if they want. <laughs> I didn't pick that up because I'm on a sugar fast right now. So it blocked oh, that yeah. out. <laughs> so, no, you can't. <laughs> So even though parts of me, so even though parts of me have been carrying stuff, have been carrying stuff that came down through the family line, that came down through the family line. I'm letting all parts know now. I'm letting all parts know now that it's finally safe. That it's finally safe. To release anything that's not mine. To release anything that's not mine. Anything that's not me. Anything that's not me. Wherever it came from. Wherever it came from. Any life. Any life. Any time. Any time. Any dimension. Any dimension. And I love and accept all parts of me. And I love and accept all parts of me. Even though I may be carrying unfinished business. Even though I may be carrying unfinished business. From previous lives. From previous lives. I'm letting all parts of me know now. I'm letting all parts of me know now. But that was then. That that was then. And this is now. And this is now. And I've survived. And I have survived. And I'm here in 2022. And I'm here in 2022. And it's okay to release anything I've been carrying. And it's okay to release anything that I've been carrying. From previous lives. From previous lives. Even though. Even though. When I was young. When I was young. I created so many beliefs. I created so many beliefs. Based on the stuff that was going on around me. Based on the stuff that was going on around me. And I'm letting all parts of me know. And I'm letting all parts of me know. They did a great job. They did a great job. With that little bit of information they had. <laughs> with that little bit of information they had. And I'm letting them know we have more information now. And I'm letting them know we have more information now. So it's okay to do things differently. So it's okay to do things differently. And I love and accept all those parts of me. And I love and accept all those parts of me. That have just done the very best they could. That have just done the very best they could. They did a great job. They did a great job. And those jobs are now over. And those jobs are now over. And they can create new safe and healthy jobs. And they can create new safe and healthy jobs. With a much more fun. That are much more fun. If they'd like to. If they'd like to. Or they could retire. Or they could retire. <laughs> and either way, it's okay. And either way, it's okay. Letting go now. Letting go now. Of anything that's not mine. Of anything that's not mine. Anything that's not me. Anything that's not me. Whether it came down the family line. Whether it came down the family line. Whether it came from childhood. Whether it came from childhood. Whether it came from previous lives. Whether it came from previous lives. I'm now releasing anything. I'm now releasing anything. It's no longer for my highest good. It's no longer for my highest good. 
With my thanks for a job well done. With my thanks for a job well done. Because if you're anything like me and you have quite a strong rebel, <laughs> really useful to thank them for what they've done or they fight back. <laughs> <laughs> But the truth is, all those parts have done the very best they can, and most of them have been doing it on that tiny little bit of information. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it's like upgrading the computer when you're tapping, I think. You know, the more stuff you clear, the more you're upgrading, the, you know, all those parts to the current level, current operating system. Yeah. Yeah. It makes life a lot easier. <laughs> Definitely gives us more resources to, uh, to do good and, and, and enjoy more good in our lives. Mm. Well, that was delightful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for allowing me. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And, and thank you for writing the book and for creating that resource for folks, you know, whether they're using it for themselves or other practitioners using that as, as a guideline to, to help their clients. Uh, it's, it's a really a great resource to help folks let go of what is no longer us, what's no longer serving us. Yeah. And thank you for doing the foreword for me. It was really, it felt so nice to have your energy in it. <laughs> <laughs> My pleasure. All right. Well, thanks so much for spending time with us today, Jackie. And, uh, Keep up the good work. <laughs> and you. <laughs> All right. <laughs>